I play Harold Ziedler. Harold Ziedler is loosely based on Charles Ziedler, who actually opened the Moulin Rouge in 1889. He was the, but, it, but it's, it's, he's just got the same surname. Uh, Harold Ziedler, he's a bit of a dark character. He's the front man, he's the showman. He talks to the audience, he's the one who insults the audience first, encourages them and, and wants them to cheer, wants them to get involved. But there's a dark side to Harold as well. He is, um, he, 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 um, <coughs> he, he has to, he can't give himself, he can't, he has difficulty in trusting people because he's a businessman. He's got to get things going, so he doesn't allow himself. That's a weakness. It, 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 it's, it's about love. Love is one of the major works, words. Of, and he doesn't realise until something happens, which we all kind of know where Satine is dying, and that hits him hard. And, he, and that makes, brings out his humanity. But he's a businessman. First and foremost, he's a businessman. And when that happens, that's is stepped aside, and his humanity comes out. He's quite a dark character, though. And I like that. I like that. It's been going really well. I mean, I would say that anyway, but but it has. I mean, we've done 17 previews now. I think that's, that's 17 previews, and it, we've been packed. I mean, what amazes me is, is the audience are coming in their droves and they're loving it. We have a standing ovation every single performance. And the nice thing is, that halfway through the show, there's one bit where I go up in. What I should explain is, it's it's you know, it's very immersive theatre, and as soon as you walk into the auditorium. The show doesn't start when the curtain goes up. The show starts as soon as you walk into the building. Um, I don't want to give the game away too much, but there's, you know, there's the elephant. That's crazy. There's the elephant, there's the, there's the windmill, and there's a lot going on. And there's a pre-show, there's a show before a show that happens. Um, so as soon as you walk in, you're involved. But, the, uh, but the, the, it, uh, there's one point where I get to get behind the windmill. There's one bit that I come out from the windmill, and, and it's halfway top bottom and I get to see the audience at the very top and I can see them at the bottom and their faces that's what has, has been really extraordinary and they, they get involved because they're encouraged to get involved when the show starts I actually talk to the audience I insult the audience um, and I draw them in and encourage them and so they're loving that some of them find a bit some of them like it a bit too much it's fine that's fine I'm, yeah and want to get involved? That's fine. That's what it's about. Um, but they do love the show. I mean, it's, it, 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 the reaction at the end is what is extraordinary. I mean, literally, standing mission from the very top to the very bottom. I mean, you can't ask for more than that. And they, I think they, they go out with a big smile on their faces. So, I mean, the last show I did, which was Come From Away, you couldn't get further from Come From Away than this. It, it is different because, because the show starts as soon as you walk into the building. You know, a normal show, you know, you sit down and the curtain goes up and the play or musical starts. This doesn't. This really is immersive. So that's the difference. It, it, you, are in, you as an audience, you get involved the moment you walk in. And you're encouraged to be involved. You know, right up to the very end. And, the, and there's a show within a show. And then there's another show within a show. And there's so much going on. Well, for me, the choreography is... Sonia's done an amazing job. I, I didn't know physically you were able to do it. I have to say, I don't do it. Uh -huh. Not me. No, I had a hit replace last year. No, no, we don't do things like that. Anymore. We've got past that bit. But I get to see it. Not all of it, but I get to... And the, for me, without giving the game away too much, the opening of Act 2 is really extraordinary. Well, the film is now 20 years. It's 20 years. It's 20 years. Um, I saw it 20 years ago. I haven't seen. I, I've made a point of not seeing it now. But I remember at the time it was it was out there. It certainly was like oh, wow, and it made an impact. But this goes further. This is taken the music. Justin Lin has done an amazing job with the music. Um, musically, for me, music stopped after the Beatles. What can I say? You know. But there's something very. I mean, there's a bit of Offenbach in here. But there's music from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, 80s, the 90s. There is even music from someone called Adele. In the show. So it's a combination, and how he links the music all together is, in, well, again, you know, wait to see it, I don't want to get rid of it, but it's, on well, the other thing. Tell us about the nails. The nails, okay. The nails are for Harold Ziegler. Well, that's what he's saying, but yeah. But the funny thing is, on uh, Monday, because I, I have to take it off at the weekends, I've got two little ones, and the agreement is, is I, on a Saturday night, I go home, I'll take them off, and they can put it back on the Monday. So they have a day free with Edmund. So on Monday, I've got my in-laws at the moment over from Italy. We were sitting at the table and my wife's painting my nails. And my father-in-law's on, on his iPad. 
And there's just suddenly, all of a sudden, I thought, this is weird. And I said, can, I stop? I said, can we just stop a bit? That's what I was like. And I said to my father in law, I said, is your daughter is painting your son in law's nails? Is that weird to you? Is that, is that straight? And he just looked up and he went, for this household? No. Parents, that's it. That was it. Back to normal. If it's about anything, it's about trying to, these people trying to get a show on against all the odds, when everything is against them, to get this show on. That's what they're trying to do, which is poignant, actually. Yeah, you think, absolutely, look at me now. And the, I mean, the good thing about the show is I never realised how... I've always known theatre's important, of course, and that for entertainment, but it's more than that, and we've discovered more so now from the pandemic. It's also like mental health. You come and see this show and it's going to lift you up. If you're feeling that, it's going to lift you up. It's better than drugs. And I I'm, I'm not, don't mean to name drop, but we did the Royal Variety show. Um, and I had a chat with Prince William. Now, I met Prince William when I did Come From Away. And he very kindly remembered me. And we were talking about it. And he loves theatre. And he was the one who actually said to me about mental health. And I hadn't realised it because he's, I don't, you know, he's very up on mental health situation. And he said it's also about mental health, that, that it's a great way of lifting people up out of this doldrum, this awful nightmare that we're all still living in. And it is, and I never realized how important that is, and it is important, and better than drugs. Forget the drugs, come and see the show. And it lasts longer, and it's not as expensive.